The following is a presentation of TFNN. We're going to go to Tom in Colorado, who has been good enough to hold. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, you are Mr. Happy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank hey, you. Steve, I, I've been listening to the station for over a few years now. Yes. And I'm a first-time caller to your show. And uh, I'll tell you, I love the way you break down the charts and explain things, your patience with the callers, the way you articulate the Fibonacci's and what have you. I, I think you do a great job. You're a great addition to this uh, news network. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Really do. Yeah. I can change. Let's go to a Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's happening? Hey, uh, real quick, Steve, I got to tell you, man, you saved me yesterday because I had covered my short positions when I saw that mini rally and then they tanked the market. And I didn't know whether to reshort at the close. And then when I got your video update, you totally gave me a game plan. And boy, did it work out. Oh, that's uh, great. Kudos. That's great. Kudos, man. Uh, you were right on that. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And even after it came out last night, they reported that uh, they had failed and then the, the futures came down. That's right. And then they went up again. So, that's man, right. you were right on that. go to our first caller. Let's go to Susan in Boca Raton. Susan, thanks for calling. I just have to say one thing. I just recently subscribed to your Mastering Probabilities. Oh, thank you. You have put so much time and effort in it, and it shows. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the September 18th wonderful Wednesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's truly what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools this is a tool I call, no one's education is ever complete. You know, Albert Einstein once said, a day without learning is a day wasted. There is so much to learn and so little time to learn it. Einstein lived by this principle until the day he died. Grandma Moses, she took up art late in her life. How about Colonel Sanders? He learned about the fast food business and became a master of franchising when he was in his 60s. Learning, folks? It's not attained by chance. It must be sought after and sought after with diligence. Live and learn, a motto that each of us need to live by because our education, well, just simply put, it is never complete. Learning something new is like a light bulb going off, an experience that each of us have from time to time, and light cannot be imprisoned. You know, if we took a light bulb and turned a bowl upside down over it, some of the light would spill out. Even if the light bulb were hermetically sealed, as Johnny Carson used to say when he would do his old Karnak routines, the light bulb would still heat up the bowl, and that would be imparting its warmth. Sometimes, you and I, sometimes we try to place a bowl over our human belief of the splendor that wants to shine right through any of our frustrations or discouragements in life. Well, they may be the light that is escaping from the bowl of our current belief systems. Light, folks... Light cannot be hidden underneath a bowl, and it is time to let your light shine through. It only seemed apropos to quote Thomas Edison, who once said, if you're doing anything the way you did 20 years ago, guess what? There is a better way. Speaking of better ways, next Friday, September 27th, in the spirit of Thomas Edison, I'll be shining the light on a set of tools that I use to trade the markets each day. I'll be compressing decades into hours, and as I host a master trader workshop, 
that I call the ultimate money machine. I'll teach you how to buy and sell the D point of the A to B equals CD pattern. That's where we let the market do 75% of the workforce. I'll teach you how to identify and form Gartley and Butterfly buy and sell patterns in advance so that you in advance so that you can get in on the uh, trend that maybe you previously missed out on. I'll teach you how to pull the trigger via the use of identifying reversal candles, and I'll teach you how to use what I consider to be the ultimate momentum trend indicator tool. In essence, we'll take ordinary tools and we'll turn them into extraordinary trading strategies. I had to learn the hard way that all trading tools, they're just simply tactics. Tactics, folks. Tactics. And the trick is turning tactics into strategy because that is how you produce results. I'll teach you how to be a strategist because we all know that a strategist can slay the tactician. No one's education is ever complete. Join me next Friday. Immerse yourself in an environment that folks will absolutely harness your momentum and create breakthrough after breakthrough. Getting in to the class, that's easy. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com. All the details are out there. It includes one month of my Mastering Probability Newsletter service. I say experience the bright lights because no one's education is ever complete. Let's go check out the uh, markets right now. Relatively uh, flat out here. Dow Futures trading off about 16 points at 15 uh, 449 S and P down about uh, 75 cents at 1697. Nasdaq futures up six points at 3190. Russell 2000 relatively flat trading out around 1063. King dollar up uh, about a penny right now at 8130. Of course, there is that beauty we're going to pick in on. That is the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. I mentioned yesterday we were looking at the chart patterns that were out there. We're going to follow this trade through to the end of it we've got uh, so we're going to take a look at that goldilocks off eight bucks this morning trading out at 1301 silver down 25 cents at 2153 light sweet crude up 50 cents at 10592 our call in number 877-927-6648 if you give us a call be happy to take a look at your stock your question that you've got currency whatever it might be as we take a quick peek around the globe let's go see what we've got going on over in europa right now we've got the uh what do we have out here? The FTSE is off four points. The DAX is up 23. A little bit of a mixed bags last night over in uh, over in uh, Asia. The Nikkei up 193 points. That was nice. That was up over uh, one and about one and three tenths percent. The Hang Seng off 63 points. Uh, that was down a quarter of a point. Uh, we had the uh, Shanghai up six. Uh, trading out at 22.94. Well, let's go take a look at. Start off here with this uh, Great British Pound. We talked about this uh, yesterday, and I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the uh, screen here. If you are listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thanks so much for doing that. I'll describe to you what we're looking at. Remember, you can catch the archive of this show on Channel Nine, and you can always get the live stream right here, right now, by going to the homepage of tfnn. Dot com Over on the right-hand side, you'll see a button, three little smartphone devices. Click on that. This show will stream live. We're taking a look at the Great British Pound, U.S. dollar. We're looking at the daily chart. It's a beauty out here because it has formed two reverse, two cell patterns out here. So here's the tactics. The tactics are it has shown a .786 Gartley cell. That Gartley cell pattern that we're looking at starts off from the swing point of January 2nd, 2013. That high out there, 1.6253. So we go from that swing point high to the low that was put in on July 19th. That was at $1.48, $1.481. If you do your retracements from high to low, you'll see that you would come up with a uh, .786 retracement. At a price point, the exact number on that would be 1.6014. Right now, the interest session high has been 1.5979. Remember, we use these as guidelines. We don't necessarily use these as exact numbers out here. So we are in the range. We're in the range that we have been looking at. Now, what we also have here is if we take a look at a swing point expansion, and that would be the swing point high from June the 18th, and that's out at 1.5722, all the way down to the low that came in on July 9th. Guess what? We've got a, I think I said this, but we've got a 1.272 expansion. That's taking the high to the low, taking the difference, multiplying that difference times 1.272, adding it to the low, and that'll take us right up to the price level that we're at. So we've got two sell signals. Well, actually... We've got two that I've shown you. We've got a third sell signal, and that is that price has moved into the overbought uh, territory. It's moved in towards the extreme lows. In fact, even the last time 
And it was up here at these uh, highs back when we were in January. In fact, you had some divergence out there. Uh, it was not even near that extreme of an overbought uh, condition out here. So you've got everything in place with the exception of what the strategist needs and that, folks, is a reversal signal. We don't have that right now. We certainly don't have it on the uh, daily chart. But this is a beauty because this beauty here, when you take a look at this, when this does decide to reverse. And we'll take a look at I haven't done this yet. We'll take a look at a uh, intraday chart. We'll look at a 30-minute chart, see if we can see any kind of reversal out there in the Great British Pound, U.S. dollar. But the nice thing about this trade here, the minimum move is going to be down to the hammer candle that we pointed out yesterday on August the uh, 28th. It also is a dead cat bounce area, one55 Three, three. In fact, it couldn't get any easier than this because what price ought to do is make a .618 retracement. That would take you down into about the $1.52 level, and that's a beauty because if that hammer candle gets broken, if you're long, you are wrong. But you should expect some support as a Great British Pound, when it does reverse, makes its way into that 155 level. Let's go to Lou in uh, Nashua. Lou, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Okay. Uh, fine. Good, good, um, good. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you, uh, astrologically, uh, what is happening as far as uh, the planetary structure? The planetary structure, well, uh, thank goodness the uh, sun is going to rise, so I can tell you that. So that's a good that's thing. Good. Yeah, yeah, so I like that, and I always like to be able to see that. Now, um, as we take a look at the full moon and new moons that are out here, they basically have done, uh, there, there's not a trading strategy that I've seen that has been uh, working at all for quite some time. You know, the last uh, cycle that we had, we had a new moon come in on September the 5th, and basically it did absolutely uh, nothing out there. Full moons always tend to be very positive. Can't tell you the reason why, but uh, full moons, uh, you typically the market will either continue on its way up or it'll make a, a low out there. Typically, uh, we did have a couple full moons out here recently, July 22nd and May 25th, that did act as some reversal areas. So when it comes to the full and new moons, I say just uh, celebrate them, but don't necessarily use them when it comes to any trading strategy because they just simply have not worked well enough. You would want to use other patterns out there and other signals. That's on the uh, full moons and new moons. There's a, another planetary cycle that I like to use. It's called Moon Conjunct Pluto out here. Now, I've got that chart up on the screen, and this one is one that works really well. I will tell you that from 2011 through 2000 and uh, June, two, June 24th, 2013, it worked really 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 well i mean you want to talk about being able to identify short-term uh highs or lows out there this one worked really well we did have a new one that came in just a few days ago i can switch over to that that was the uh, moon conjunct pluto that came in on september 14th market happened to gap up there but lou if you can hold on through the break we'll take a look at some of the lunar trading strategies out here and a few other things 877-927-6648 we'll be right back folks says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Lou from uh, Nashua We're taking a look at some of the uh, some of the celestial lunar uh, type aspects that are out there and the uh, chart that I've got on my screen here uh, Lou the moon conjunct uh, Pluto uh, you know and I've got all of the different aspects here label we could go back years and years and years and you know I like being aware of the uh, lunar uh, aspects out there that that work and there are time periods here where uh, this set of lunar aspects the moon when it's a, a conjunct uh, Pluto here uh, can really uh, be great from a market timing standpoint you know if you if you go back are you watching on Tiger TV by any chance unfortunately not you're not okay. Uh, if you if you check out the archive of this uh, show, you'll you'll see this chart out here, and so it does make sense to be aware of these uh, aspects. Now, the last one that came in was on the uh, 14th, which I think was over the weekend. So that was uh, Saturday, and so the question is, uh, and these typically work better uh, when the market is either moving up or down uh, into it. And you know, we did have a high, we did have a gap up on uh, Monday, obviously, and. 
The high there, 1705.52. Yesterday, uh, we closed at, uh, or the high on, uh, I'm sorry, the high on Monday was 1704.95. Yesterday, we closed at 1704.76. So I don't know whether that is going to turn out to be any kind of uh, resistance area or, or signal out there, but it is something to be aware of. The best lunar cycle that works on a continuous basis, and you called about the S&P, and I know you also trade the uh, futures, so the ES Mini, uh, that I would be paying attention to is the uh, is perigee and uh, perigee came in unfortunately that came in on sunday and so in this case here i don't know whether support and I'm, I'm 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 reluctant to say support is at 1692 because price broke through that level so i'm thinking the uh, the real level to be watching was friday's close which was 1682.25 and i would say this much if after uncle ben comes out and the way that the market responds, if by the close today at 4 o'clock, uh, the ES Mini is trading below 1682.25, hopefully you've got your shorts on at that stage. And if you don't and you're long, uh, chances are you're wrong and that you've seen a, uh, say a pretty significant top at the, out there. So <clears throat> that's, how, that's how I would be uh, paying attention to it. But in the case when you have uh, perigee or apogee come in over a weekend, it becomes a little bit more difficult until you've seen the market trade for a while as to uh, where the level of support or resistance is going to uh, be. So I hope that that helps. Or, or do you have another question about what I've said that maybe I can try to clear up? No. Uh, what's your gut feeling? Uh, my gut is to uh, is to be neutral and to wait to see how the market trades right now. I can give you all kinds of bullish signals. I can give you several, and I also know that there are some some very silent indicators out there that uh, suggest that uh, this thing could uh, this thing could crater, and that we could really actually be looking at uh, the way that the market's traded over the last two days is exactly what it did back in 2007 when it was making its highs. So I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but I do enough of the work to go back and try to find uh, patterns. You know, I just, I'm agnostic when it comes to the stock market, whether it goes up or down. I just want to be able to get the direction, the trend right, and then go ahead and uh, jump in and let the market carry me in. And that's really what I'm going to be waiting for. So I'm, I can give you bullish signals. I can give you all the reasons why the market, you know, uh, has broken out and should continue to break out. But there's enough bearish signals out there there to say be careful and so that's all i'm going to do i'm going to be careful because i'm not one to uh, try to buy the uh, bottom tick and sell the top tick it just doesn't work for me i can make plenty of money just by uh, waiting for another signal and then jumping into the market that way so that that's my gut just be patient and uh, we'll know we'll have well i don't know that we'll even know we should have a pretty good feeling by 3 30 today great all righty Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ben. Thanks so much for calling. Let's go out to uh, Sarasota. To uh, is it Scott? Scott, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good morning, Steve. Doing well. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. You had a couple of different equities that you wanted to uh, look at. One uh, ticker symbol GSS. Is that is that Golden Star Resources? That's correct. Okay. Uh, tell me what you're uh, doing there. I'll go ahead and pull it up on the screen and how I can help you out. Well, just looking for a buy point right now. I've noticed on that that uh, I know it's, it's uh, a little bit down, but there's 40 cents of the last couple months was the low it went at uh, on big volume back in June. And then coming down now, uh, just looking for what would be a, a right entry point. Hmm. I tell you, hey, Scott, can you do me a favor? Can you hold on through the break? And then when we get back from the break, the market will open. I'll do that open, and we'll go right back out to you. We'll take a look at Golden Star Resources as well as Helcon Resources. We'll go back out to Sarasota to our man Scott. You can get in on the action as well. Give us a call, folks. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow trading down 24 points. Out at 15.506 S&P, flat down 81 cents at 17.03. The Nasdaq composite up three points at 37.48. Russell 2000 up 39 cents to the upside. Apple leading the charge. It's up about seven bucks right now, trading out at 462. And a little bit of change. Adobe Systems up a nice seven percent this morning, up 341. Sohu up 262. That's up about four percent. FedEx out with, uh, I believe they were out with some numbers. Uh, they were up uh, two. They're up two percent right now. Dollar Tree up. Three and a half percent. That's up uh, two bucks to the downside. Triumph Group 
They're down about 9% here. Taking the uh, hit, though, is Tower Group International. Not sure what's behind the move. They're trading off 23% right now, down 3 bucks, 5 below, below again today, off about 4%, down a buck 78 Let's go back out to uh, Sarasota. We're talking with uh, Scott. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol uh, GSS. The uh, name of the company is Golden Star Resources. And so you're looking for an entry point. Into, is this a company, Scott, that uh, you have? Have you traded this stock for a while? Is there a reason that you're, you know, that you're looking at at a fifty cent stock as as a, you know, as a, you know, give me a little bit of background on it that might help me out too. No, it's just been, I've been looking like a great Panther Silver, Golden Star Resources, looking at some gold and silver ones, just trying to find one that has a, a right entry point with uh, with yeah. gold coming down. So I know I don't know that it's yet, but I think it's going to be coming up. So sure. So you know, if we take a look, so it's a great question. So thanks for that. Thanks for that input here. So if we take a look at at this equity, and you take a look at the stocks that really moved off of the uh, lows out here, you know this is one that I probably wouldn't be going after as far as which ones have been stronger or weaker. Uh, you know this did break out, no question about it, on August the twelfth. It had wide price spread and accelerated volume, so that was nice. Nine point three million shares, and it came back and it tested that breakout area yesterday. So I can see why you're looking at it. it came back with one point. 7 million uh, shares out here. So that that you know so it has come back to a breakout area. So if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to take a stab at this, here's the thing that I would do though. I would time this with the with the actual silver market making a reversal. And I don't know that we've seen that thus far. But whenever you do place a trade on this and maybe you go ahead and you decide the scale in cuz it came back to a breakout area and it held what I would consider doing is taking 1% of your working capital and buying an unexpired option. What you would do is, let's say you had 10000 in capital, and uh, you'd 1% of that would be 100 bucks. That's all that I would risk. In this case here, I would buy 200 shares because it's selling, at, in essence, at 50 bucks. And then at that stage, uh, you know, you're, you, you know if it's, it, it would almost be more of a longer-term holding that you would be looking at in this type of equity. You mentioned Great Panther. I believe GPL is the uh, ticker symbol there. And just to right. try to compare the two stocks, maybe side by side let me do that for you you know the beauty of great panther which i don't know that we have in this equity here g gss uh, what uh, golden uh, star resources if we go ahead i'll put go great panther i'll give one away to you if we put this on a, a monthly chart on great panther what you're going to see is a high volume high that says that at some point in time in its future it should get back to 355 to 504. If I do the same thing on GSS here and put it on a monthly chart, uh, we're not going to see a high volume monthly high, not like we see inside of uh, Great Panther. Great Panther was the uh, month of March 31st, 2011. Uh, if I go back to March of 2011 out here, just inside this equity, just for the heck of it, uh, March of 2011. Uh, I got to get to the 2011 time frame. You know, not really. I I just don't see the high. You know, I, I just don't see it as much. But that doesn't mean that it that it won't take off to the moon. I just think Great Panther Silver at ninety three cents is a better equity for you to get into than uh, than uh, Golden Star Resources at at fifty two cents. But that that's just my take on it. Okay. And then the other one was uh, Halcon Resources HK. HK. So if we take a look at Halcon Resources, and uh, in this case here, you know, down at its uh, lows. Now this thing here, on a daily chart, we I don't see a sign of uh, of strength anywhere. In fact, last time, which was four trading sessions ago on September the twelfth, another sign of weakness as it was pushing lower with uh, volume, eleven point five million shares. So this is traded at four seventy five. If I put this back on a monthly chart let me see where this is at so this thing here looks like it's going to come all the way back into uh, a breakout on a monthly chart that takes you back to december of 2011 and says it could actually get down to a low of about two dollars and 86 cents out here so it's at 475 now and it may come all the way back into its original breakout. We don't see any kind of bullish sign. So on a monthly chart, you don't see any bullish uh, uh, candlesticks, any kind of reversals. That's on the uh, that's on the monthly chart. If I look at this on a, a weekly chart uh, for you, 
You know, I don't see anything weekly. Uh, the weekly chart is also telling you December 23rd, 2011. And this would say uh, on the weekly chart, pay attention to maybe the price level of about $3.30. So at this stage, until there would be some sign, of, some type of sign of strength or a bullish reversal signal, the uh, monthly and the weekly say you need to be patient on this. So I hope that that okay. works for you. Let me give you one question on that, uh, which really has nothing to do with, with technicals. But... Uh, I'm just curious how you factor this in, if you do at all even, is I noticed on this one that the last three months there's been quite a bit of insider buying in the $5 range or so, which obviously, you know, they're down on it a little bit, but there was 12 different buys by insiders. And yeah. does that have any influence on how you look at something or no? I think that uh, here's so Mike. It's a great question, and thanks so much for asking it. My my take is to take a look at the overall group of stockholders. Um, so and 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 I and I love the question, and thanks. And it's because uh, my early days of trading uh, and investing, which uh, takes us from nineteen. Well, no, is it 1979? Uh, so from 1979 to. Gosh, what is it, about 2006? So that's a pretty long period of time. Guess you got to understand, I'm a bean counter by uh, by 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 skill, by trade, Scott. And uh, so, you know, I can rip apart any kind of financial statement and and take a look at revenues and sales and expenses. And having been a a CFO before, I understand all the hidden drawers that uh, that they need to have in order to be able to turn their numbers. And so when I take a look at fundamentals, what I've learned is the most fundamental aspect of trading is what are the real shareholders doing, the overall group of shareholders versus just the insiders out there. And, uh, and to me, that's, uh, you know, learning, learning how to read a, a stock chart and the patterns that are out there and reversal signals and volume, that that is the most fundamental. That was the whole piece of the fundamentals that I was missing. And so in this case here, I would be looking more at the uh, global uh, aspect of, of what's going on here and what we have seen so far because it's what the shareholders are doing that, it, that can run you over. You know, it doesn't matter how good fundamentals are. Apple proved that. You know, there's not anything wrong with uh, Apple as a company, the cash. I mean, how would you like to own it? You know, for, if it was a private company, I mean, they're making money over. I mean, they're a good company, right? Right. But take a look at it going from 700 bucks down to, you know, what it's trading at right now, three, three something or whatever it's actually trading at. So, uh, in my opinion, the, you're, you're on the right track, but instead of looking at insider buying and selling, just take a look at what's going on on a daily basis. And it wasn't a good sign inside of Helcon to see all the selling going on on September the 12th, 11 million shares as it was pushing down into uh, lows out here. So wait for, on both of these equities, what you'd really like to see is some kind of sign of strength. On the other one, now what does Helcon Resources do? Uh, they're in the oil and the natural gas exploration doing that, and just in North America only. I see. Okay. Yeah, you know, for whatever reason, they must be having some other fundamental, uh, some something else fundamental wrong, fundamentally wrong, because, you know, this ought to at least be able to track, if they're big into natural gas, you know, natural gas made a nice reversal. I think that was back right around uh, August the uh, 8th, if I recall correctly here. Yeah, August the 8th. And, you know, and it has had one heck of a nice move up, and this is going in the opposite direction. So I'd rather see you be trying to find a buy point in UNG for natural gas and spending time on uh, on, uh, Helcon resources. Now, in the case of Helcon, you know, we took a look at this thing pulling back even further. uh, It maybe becomes a good buy down in that $3.30-ish type range or so. So I hope that helps you. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Hey, you bet, and thanks so much for your call, and thanks so much for your questions. All right, now we've got, let's go take a look at the market. You know, uh, we mentioned Apple. Apple is leading to the upside today, so let's go check in on Apple, see what it is uh, doing out here, see if it's turning the uh, corner. Uh, where is it? My group of core stocks. It's usually right in front of me. There we go. It's right dead center smack. You know, couldn't hit me upside the head out here. So as we take a look at Apple gapping up uh, this morning, uh, let's see the kind of volume we've got in this so far is 2 million uh, shares. And if Apple can close above the trading session from September 16th, uh, which is uh, 461.61, it's trading right now at 461.95. And I'm talking close, not trade above it. But if it can close above that level with some uh, good volume, 
uh, might actually be a uh, decent uh, buy out there. We've got to realize that, you know, we had this little downdraft uh, out here uh, with 32 million shares on September the 11th. But uh, this is one that I'm paying uh, close attention to a little bit because fundamentally I think they're on to uh, something. I believe that Apple, a little silently, is going to be going after all of that credit card business out there. And if they're not man, then they are just totally missing the uh, boat out here. But that's the way that I think that the uh, market is going to go, and that's going to be a huge, huge uh, deal out there. Uh, nonetheless, let's continue taking a look at some of these core stocks. Let's go see what is going on in the world of IBM. As we take a look at IBM, that is trading right now at 192.96. Now, this is going to be important to be paying attention to on any kind of a, a pullback. We can see IBM went from that extreme over uh, sold condition, moved up towards overbought uh, status back uh, two trading sessions ago, September the uh, 16th. And now the key is how will this pull back? Will this pull back? with light volume or will this uh, pull back with some accelerated volume the key here in ibm probably is as it gets down into this gap up from september the 10th and that price level is around 186.37 uh, if we take a look at retracements here retracement low to the high that was most recently formed out there we'll also see that it's a 0.618 retracement that'll take us right down into that gap right down in right down into the low of september 10th 186.34 is the exact 0.618 retracement so that's the area for us to be paying attention to if in fact ibm does uh, go ahead and retrace and pull back from here uh, microsoft microsoft didn't do much yesterday considering they were having a big 22 billion dollar buyout or or what, $40 billion? Some kind of billion-dollar buyout and about a 20% increase in their dividend out here. But the market did not respond to uh, that. So that seems like that's a little bit of dead meat. Might have some nice, uh, might be a nice little trading range here. Uh, the 200-period exponential moving average. You'd like to see it test the uh, low uh, one more time. The low, high-volume low from July 19th out at 3102. If it can hold 3102, maybe you're looking at between 3102 uh, up to about uh, probably the area of the breakdown, which would be... Uh, uh, the candle from August 23rd, maybe 34 bucks to 35 20 out there. That's in uh, Microsoft. But right now it looks like it's just simply going to consolidate sideways for a, a while out there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here on the uh, charts to uh, pay attention to? Um, not, not anything else that I see. Let's go back and uh, let's go back and take a look now at the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. We were looking at that earlier this morning. I'll put the uh, larger chart up on the screen here for all those of you that maybe just joined us because I think this is the most intriguing, uh, 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 most intriguing trade that I have identified uh, so far, and that is because it has formed two sell signal patterns out here. It hasn't given us the signal to go ahead and sell it, at least not on the uh, daily chart, but we're looking at a 0.786 Gartley cell and a 1.272 Butterfly cell. So it is a thing of beauty as well as it's got this 2.618 uh, B to uh, a D expansion. So that is our B to C, actually. It's the B to C expansion, but it's the B to D swing point that is our 2.618. So this is, uh, this is one here that's fashioned after Leonardo Fibonacci. Uh, so, uh, the Pisa Fibonacci. So this one is a uh, beauty, and this one here should work. The question is now timing. And uh, if we go try to figure out the timing on this, let's go take a look at a 30-minute chart just to see if there's any other pattern that might be forming out here. What is it that we've got to be paying attention to on the uh, shorter-term chart? So let me just uh, make sure that all of this is updated here. We can see on the 30-minute chart how price had moved into the extreme over-bought uh, uh, condition as was making that move up here so my chart now is just refreshing come on baby give us a doesn't my chart doesn't understand we're live on the air there we go okay so now we're refreshed so take a look at that wide ranging bar from 5 a.m this morning uh went from a uh, low of 1.592 all the way up to 1.596 a nice big wide ranging bar you can see that uh as it moved into that overbought condition uh it has had to work itself off now it's been working itself off by just simply moving sideways so i'm not seeing any kind of reversal signal here yeah that you had a little bearish engulfing candle it did take place at 7 a.m. Uh, this morning, but it's this bar. So even though we've seen a little bit of a reversal, this is the bar right here. This is the bar we've got to really be paying attention to at 5 a.m. out there. That's on the uh, intraday chart, the 30-minute chart. But we'll continue to watch this trade because I think this one's got some real opportunity for us. We'll be right back, folks.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus Prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly gold report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the gold report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, pretty flat market out here. The uh, Dow's off 13. S&P is uh, up 77 cents. Composite is up uh, five bucks. And uh, look, folks, if you if you are wanting to, if you've got even the least 
bit of interest in learning about uh, technical trading, the uh, best place to uh, jump in and begin to immerse yourself is going to be uh, next uh, Friday, uh, September the uh, 27th out there. Uh, I'm holding a, a master trader. Don't don't let the terminology master trader uh, course uh, scare you or anything. Look, I just jumped in. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do. That's where I jumped in, and uh, you know, I'm there to hold your hand. I'm there to teach you just exactly what it is that you do need to know. And I know that it looks, uh, it may look a little daunting, depending on where you're coming at, coming from when it comes to technical analysis. You know, it's nothing like anything else. You know, in, in, in my life, I've, I've done a lot of manual labor jobs. Uh, for one summer, I was a brick mason, and, man, that turned my shoulders and arms and muscles from, uh, you know, from nothing into uh, huge rocks out there. Uh, you know, as it was a 50 days to... I did had two paper routes. I did the Detroit Free Press early in the morning before school and the Detroit News after school when I was a young uh, lad. I uh, did, uh, at 15 years old, I used to wash floors and toilets on the uh, weekends. That was nice. Uh, that was some nice money out there that I was making. I believe I was getting paid five bucks an hour to uh, do that. Remember, if you've ever used one of those uh, those uh, uh, floor strippers, you know, the 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 big old metal machine with the big round pad on them and uh, I remember the very first time that uh, uh, I can remember to this day the very first time I went to this uh, company to uh, you know and I was going to be stripping their floors on the uh, weekends and waxing them and you know taking care of the, the you know the lavatories the whole the whole thing and I remember grabbing that machine and you know and and, and squeezing the uh, squeezing the grips to in order to get that uh, pad to spin and bang right into you know you know the uh, uh, a big a big old filing cabinet or what have you. If you've never used one of those machines, let me tell you, there is this there's this there's this there. If you if you just grab it and you hold it real strong, what have you, you know that's not the uh, tool. But eventually, it didn't take long before I was able to you know take those machines. I could squeeze it with one hand and it could just simply dance on a, a floor that was uh, full of water or wax or what have you. And so the reality is that look, I can teach you. I know that I can teach you this. I know that I can teach you how to be able to read a stock chart, how to be able to just set yourself free so that you can determine what the message of the uh, markets are. So if you've got the least bit of interest, uh, you know, your total cost over your lifetime, it's really, really small. All the details are on the homepage of uh, TFNN.com. Uh, it is going to be next Friday. If you can't be there, uh, don't worry because it's archived and you've got access to me. You know, you give me a call. We'll speak on the phone. And I want you to get it and I want you to understand uh, this stuff. To me, that's the most empowering thing. So I hope you give me the opportunity to be able to do that. As we take a look here at what we're going to be paying attention to in the uh, charts today. We're certainly going to be looking at the uh, VIX index here. Uh, this morning here, it moved up and it tested the 50-day exponential moving average. That level is 1470, got up to a high today of 1468. So it's traded back down to 1436. But here's the deal. Coming into the close today, this thing is above the 50-day uh, uh, the, uh, exponential moving average. That is bearish. That is very negative. That's where all the destruction in the market begins to take place. Can't tell you the reason why. I just know that it does. Now, it is above the 50-day smooth moving average out there, simple moving average, but with regard to the exponential, it has not broken above that, and I prefer to use the exponential based on my testing and going back and taking a look at when the destruction is done in the marketplace. So about 1470 is what you want to be paying attention to. With regard to uh, what the uh, bears would need in order to have a real reversal in the uh, market today, I believe it would need net, uh, net, uh, boy, it's around 3,000 issues or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a number during the next hour. But if you're off to start your day, have a safe Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care, folks. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely 
identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 129%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFN.com.